the oracle, as you put your hand on it, would just move around. Well, my brother's a jokester, you know, I thought he's doing it, and he's con trying to convince me he's not doing this. And what I did, uh, I took the Ouija board by myself up to my bedroom one night. But the Ouija board still answered his questions, and Jeff knew some other force was at work. It scared me, but at the same time, it was kind of like a roller coaster ride. You're scared to death, but you're thrilled. I began to recognize after this that there was a, uh, a presence that began to develop in my house. I mean, I would wake up in the middle of the night and literally feel someone's watching me. And I would wake up and, and literally walk through the house in order to experience that because I liked it. And normally a kid in third grade or second grade or whatever mm. wakes up and feels some presumably dark mm -hmm. presence in the room doesn't want to get up and walk around the house at night alone to right. feel it or check it out. Right. Well, I, I based this experience on the fact that I knew that there was more. There was something. There was uh, the other side. Jeff was soon closer to the presence than he was to his own alcoholic father. I mean, I was just, I was unhappy as a, as a kid. I, I didn't want to be where I was. I didn't want to be in the family I was in. So I was looking for an escape. I was looking for literally the possibility of something else, anything else, because my life is, I'll be honest with you, it's hell. You know, I mean, here I am, the town drunk's kid, being abused, uh, being neglected. I, I didn't feel loved. Soon after his experience with the Ouija board, the presence Jeff felt in his home spoke to him. I woke up one night, um, and literally, it was, there was like a voice behind my, my ear saying, Jeff, come, you know, come here, I got something to show you. This strange force took Jeff on out-of-body experiences. During these times, he saw things days before he experienced them in real life. Then Jeff met a man who happened to be a practicing Satanist. He prayed over me and laid hands on me. And when he laid hands on me, I was filled with a demon. Jeff believed Satanism was the path to honing his paranormal abilities. And when a demon is around you or is inside of you, uh, the sensation or the sense of their presence, you lie to yourself. You think that that's your power level. He and his new teacher formed their own coven and recruited other teens to join them. I saw each and every one of them become demon-possessed. And I noticed something in my heart. My heart felt for them. It was like I was convicted. I knew it was wrong. It was like I knew this, this shouldn't be happening. I fought that because I'm a Satanist. I don't care about anybody or anything but me. I mean, here I am, a caring Satanist, you know. So I began to ritually try to kill this part of me that's alive, this heart, this, this part of me that, that cares. No matter what they tried, Jeff and the demonic forces inside him just couldn't kill that little seed of love and compassion. So, the demons that had given him power for so many years turned on Jeff and tried to kill him instead. The demons inside of me literally began to uh, torment me. I mean, turned against me and, and, and against each other, sending me through hell. Jeff decided the only way to escape the torment was to kill himself. Got me a gun and went down to my motel and put the gun against my head. And when I looked down the barrel of that gun, the thought in my mind, where are you going to spend eternity, came out of nowhere. I couldn't pull the trigger. The next day, Jeff tried to hang himself, but the rope slipped. He went to bed sobbing. Again, he heard a voice, but this time it was different voice came from I mean, right here next to me and said, get out. And I knew it wasn't demonic. It was different. And what I did was I got out of bed and I didn't even think about walking through the house and going out the back door. I opened up my, my window and stepped out my window. And I'll be honest with you, when I stepped out my window, I was, I was in a completely different presence. And, and I knew it was God. There was this incredible presence of power, but love. I knew that that power that had been pursuing me, who wouldn't let me die, was present. 
here is the love that you've always wanted, always needed, that you've always been searching for. And you went looking for it in the wrong place. Because you didn't have it, you turned to darkness. Now here it is. Well, I just looked up in the sky and I just said, Jesus, make my life okay. Though he had just given his life to Christ, Jeff still had to deal with the demons. He had been performing elaborate satanic rituals for years, but all it took to get rid of the demons was the simple prayer of a woman he met at church. And she just started praying, she, Harry, and myself, and she just started praying, and the demons inside of me just, just came up and literally turned my head, and I looked at her, and she looked at the demons, and she just said, in the name of Jesus, go. And they left. It was like that. And I ran to find a mirror. And I looked at myself for the first time in four years. Because every day I shaved, I saw the demons. Finally, I'm free. Jeff was soon able to get married, in part because his need for love and acceptance had finally been met by God. And every one of us are looking for someone, somewhere to take care of us, to love us. We're all still children, though our bodies age. We have a Heavenly Father who's real, who we have access to any time we want. Think about that. What an awesome opportunity to be loved, to be taken care of, to be provided. He'll never leave us or forsake. It's almost, it's almost too good to be true, so we deny it. Don't deny it. Take Him at His word. Allow Him to be who He says He is. Don't tell Him what to do. Don't try to manipulate him. Just be his child and let him provide in love for you. He will.